Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tesla.com. I'm at the RPF Showcase, the annual gathering of members of the Replica Prop Forum. But yeah. not everything we see here are replica props. A lot of just amazingly engineered and designed and finished pieces. Now Michael, you made and worked on these for lack of a better phrase, music boxes. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. When I, they are so striking, they cut my eye, they actually animate, and they, to me, evoke automata. Um, they do, yeah. Animated so. machines that self-contain, run on loop. Tell me about what these are and how you went about making them. Okay, sure. So um, I used to work with a company called Grant McCune Design. Uh, Grant McCune was you know, one of the masters of visual effects back in the day. Worked with Bill Short, John Dykstra, so won an Oscar for Star Wars, mm -hmm. the original Star Wars visual effects. Um, so we'd, we'd have a client that every year he would basically commission these pieces. Oh. And they're, I mean, for lack of a better term, we call them music boxes. But, you know, you could call them a modern day Fabergé egg. They are very much, you know, akin to automata. Um, yeah. Sculptural so pieces yeah. that mechanize. Yeah, exactly. But maybe not mechanized with gears and, you know, hand cranks. Maybe, are they electronic on the inside? They are electronic. They are. Sure. Yeah. So walk me through that design process. You work with a client, the client comes to you and says, I love every year, I want to get a new music box. Uh, they come with a theme, a sketch. How does that work? You know, it really varies. I mean, you can see from year to year, you know, they, they're, they're very different in theme and build up and shape and size. And you never know, like, for example, this one here, uh, Basically, the client came in and said, here's a picture of a rusty mine car. Run with it. All right. Whereas this one here, it was very much a vision that came out of the client's head. Mm. So the really neat thing is, you know, there's a lot of exploration in design. Um, but even so, like, if, if the client has a vision, there's still a lot of creativity on our part. Yeah, and the yeah. constraints also, because if the client says, I want something that's evocative of a rusty mine cart, you know it's going to be, this footprint fits yeah. on a desk. You know how much of the mechanisms you can fit inside. It has to run an animation loop. Sure. So sure. you have a, a mine cart that runs. Yeah, yeah. Then. Um, and then is everything digitally designed? Uh, it's, no, it's a combination of both. I mean, for example, this globe was nothing more than you know, a, a pre-bought plastic sphere mm. that was sculpted on top of. Ah, so okay. the texture of the states, the continents, was sculpted on. Uh, Atlas was a sculpted piece, hand sculpted. Uh, this, this figure right here was a hand sculpted piece. And then a lot of these, like this, uh, this deco patterning, you know, I, I, was, I built up everything in either styrene or, you know, found parts like pre-existing half spheres, mm -hmm. acrylic half spheres, things like that. But then on the other hand, uh, you know, very, a lot of these things I designed in 3D and 3D printed mm. and either took straight off the 3D printer or, and just finished and, and bonded. Or, or and, body shop. Some of it, yeah. I mean, like the detail on this, this Capitol Dome, that's literally straight off the machine. You know, and it's, it's a filament based print, but at the time we liked the texture. Yeah. So we went with it. You will go with what works for yeah. design. There's no sure. need to 3D print all these if you could piecemeal them together. Sure. And take those old model making techniques right. and apply them. I also love that none of this betrays the me mechanisms inside. Everything yeah, is yeah, hidden. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's running it. It just animates. Like even your, your pulleys here, you're using rope here. Sure. It's all part of the aesthetic. Yeah, and I mean, you can see when this one runs, you can see the machine brass actually spin. The rope's actually going down, the weights move. You know, the figure stands up and squats down and it's, they're just they're beautiful pieces. It's, it's been a real pleasure, and I've been very blessed to work on them. To uh, design an animation, a, a mechanized animation, yeah. uh, is that a lot of trial and error? Sure. How, is, or yeah, how, how much sure. of that from paper, from computer screen to finish, gets to the actual motion that you want? Well, for example, if you look at these train tracks, train tracks are bound by certain uh, scale, dimension, right? And in fact, these train tracks are pre-bought you know, miniature scale trains, right? But we still had to figure out the best way to assemble these on a water jet aluminum cut plate. Right. So there were several iterations of the plate, you know, because mm -hmm. we couldn't get it right the first time. Very, yeah. very cool. Well, thank you so much, Michael, for yeah, bringing these yeah. to the RPF party. I know they're not replicas of movie props, but they are But you still know, I love to build that too. So. Yeah, so you still yeah. have the collection. Yeah. Uh, these are just so striking, and it's a pleasure to hey, meet you. Anytime, anytime. Thank you.